told police that him and his wife had an understanding and he told her, if you want this to take this, this is true. <laughs> 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 yeah. Next you're going to be like, Bogle had a very bad theory and he was like, it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. The whole chemistry lab's exploding. He's like, fine, it's fine. I'm actually a very good scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome along to the Community Notice Board. I am. Let's do it. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Community Notice Board Podcast, a podcast about suburbs we grew up in, local landmarks, hometown heroes, and coming of age tales. We've got a very special guest today. Very funny comedian and another member of our five aside team. <laughs> we have the very it's funny. a recurring theme. This <laughs> yeah, we're just going to repeat the same eleven people now. The very funny Laura Coleman is hey. here. How are hey. you, Laura? Hey. hey guys, I'm good. I'm fresh out of ISO. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Just dropping in. Awesome. And we, you haven't done a rat test to prove that. But we're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's we're still positive. Exactly. It'll be yeah, positive yeah. You are weeks. shedding pretty heavily. No, yeah, right the line is so faint. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're here to talk. We're going back to the North Shore again, baby. We're oh, yeah. talking about the big one of the big ones, oh, maybe. We're talking big, about Lane Cove. <laughs> the LC. The LC. <laughs> Funnily <laughs> enough, <laughs> my initials as well. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Born wow. for it. Born into it. Yeah. And so, what was it like growing up in Lane Cove, Laura? Mm, yeah, so you guys have had a few <laughs> guests from the North Shore, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and listen to Tom Walker's episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Tom Cashman, yeah. Yeah. Eden McGovern. Any of the Toms. Um, yeah, no, it was a great place to grow up. Um, very wealthy kind of middle class area. Mm-hmm. Um, I lived on a street actually where a lot of the kids went to the public school, which was like a weird vibe. So, like, everyone I went to primary school with... Because it was public? Yes. Okay. All right. went to private schools. Uh-huh. But then, like, I lived on this street where, I don't know, for whatever reason, everyone just decided to send their kids to the actual local high school and that was very odd. Um, <laughs> Made them all live so you're on, on the same street. Yeah, you're on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no. You're in the slums. I was <laughs> Lane Cove North, which ironically oh, is not right. the posh part of Lane Cove. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, did, so, that was weird when you'd come home. From your private school and all the public school kids are there. No, their- no. Well, I well I was saying this to Jamie when you asked me to come on the podcast. Um, I actually went to three different high schools. Oh. So I went. I started off. I went to the public school, Chatswood High, and then I went to private school for one year, and then I ended up going to school in the inner west. Mm. Um, so why no all the moves? Could yeah, it contain you. Just kept me on expel. Yeah, kept yeah attacking expel teachers. every time. <laughs> um, no, look, I think. Like most of you probably, I just didn't really like being a teenager. Mm. And I thought, I oh. loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it and like, this guy loves it. That was the time of my life. <laughs> really? Oh, skateboarding every day, no worries. Fucking hell. You could do that now Slingshot, if you wanted to. Yeah. What are you, yeah, Dennis yeah, the Menace, yeah, pretty much. Shot. Damn. So, Hang I mean, Jamie mate. still is a teenager. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, all your, all your interests are teenage interests, you know? Yeah, for a teenage interest from 2004, mm. I think. Like, <laughs> I don't know what the kids are into these days. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, but that's right. But that's, you know, enjoying being a teenager. But you didn't like being no, a teenager. No, I think I just, yeah. You know, when you're like, oh, school sucks. I'll just, and I just thought, oh, I'll, I'll go to go a three. different <laughs> school. But it still sucked. Like, wherever yeah, you went, yeah. you were still like, the no, pro- this problem is coming with you. What you mean you have homework here too? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, but no, it was good. Like it gave me a good kind of perspective, I guess, on mm. like different stuff. I want to know because you went to school with previous guest Jack White. Jack White, Jack Ryan. <laughs> <Ryan. laughs> yes, from the White House. <laughs> <Ryan. laughs> yes. um, how, how did he compose Seven Nation yeah. Army? <laughs> <laughs> well, funny you should ask. <laughs> it was in biology class one day. Um, so yes. were you and Jack friends or are you in the same year? We're in the same year. We're in the same biology class together. I remember him being very funny, even in high school. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah Dissecting the frog and going, oh, yeah, dancing. Oh, like totally. Little, <laughs> yeah, the legs yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, my <laughs> Standing <laughs> outside the window of the biology classroom smoking a dart. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Brown paper bag. Yeah. Like, What's going on in here, miss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you um, gonna finish that? <laughs> <laughs> finish that frog? <laughs> Can I eat the rest of that dissected frog? <laughs> 
<laughs> Jack was telling me, I think, because I mentioned, I was like, oh, Lord's coming on biology class. He's like, yeah, me and my friends used to stick magnesium in the plug holes. And I was like, that's very dangerous. He's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems about the vibe. No. So he was the jo- he was the class clown. Yes, very much. Mm. Yeah, very much. And no, we weren't really friends. We were like friendly, but um, we weren't like, oh, let's meet up in 15 years doing open mic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't make a plan. I think Jack had like that, that plan. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jack's yeah. like, I'll be there if you want to come. Yeah. 15 years, you know where I'll be. It'll be at the Norfolk. <laughs> There'll be about five people in the crowd. Um, I'll be doing a bit about Woody Allen. It's very good. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's So that's interesting, though, to come back around. And when you when you first started gigging and you saw Jack there, was it like, hey, we did? Was it yeah, awkward? It was, no, it wasn't awkward. Right, it was okay. weird. I was like... You've been doing this the whole time, and I'm very bad at it. So it was a little bit embarrassing, but right. it was also like, no, you know. Was your where was your first gig? Was it wasn't it CAC? Was it? No. What was my first gig? Well, I'm one of those people who embarrassingly did a comedy course. Hey. Mm. But it was the same one that um, John Crookshank did, so you know, yeah, it worked out alright okay. for him. Um, yeah, and so I did like a gig at the end of that that the guy organized was that their thing like they're like you know crookshank graduated from this gig like that was the big get i don't think so i don't know out the window smoking a (laughs) dollar yeah 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 yeah. actually yes at sydney community (laughs) college um no so i did that and then i just started doing open mics i think the first one i did was that one that um Talia Joan used to run oh, in the city. Yeah, that was we great fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. I love that in the city. Well, I, I do want to bring up another comedian who has an opinion on Lane Cove, which is Tom Gleason. Mm. Did you hear about this? Okay, go on. Tom Gleason, he uh, actually boarded at St. Joey's College, but his parents lived in Lane Cove for some time, so he lived there for a while. He said uh, Lane Cove's the most boring suburb in Australia. He uh, came out, slammed it. He said they dug a tunnel under it, and now people pay good money to avoid it. <laughs> so he's throwing huge shade, which no, ab- but there was like a bit of a backlash. There was, was a, a massive, years ago. massive backlash by the Lane Cove enthusiast community, which is <laughs> <laughs> which is actually something. There's a page. It's my mum and dad. Yeah. Actually, yeah, they're really mad. There's a thing called Lane Co- in the in the Cove, which is a Facebook group community thing. Perfect. And, and uh, they released a couple of things. Uh, they sent it, first of all, they sent him. Uh, it's pretty small, but it, like the typical. Um, You've seen this sort of meme, London, Paris, New York, Milan, Lane, Lane Cove, Cove yeah, you know, yeah, that corny yeah. thing. So cool. they sent him that. And then they also sent him But then isn't the implication of sending, because that's like the, an age-old hack comedy joke to be like, yeah, and then there was this, and then there was Lane Cove. Like, aren't they essentially saying that Lane Cove's the shit one? Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. <laughs> I don't like, think they realise. This, this will teach Tom Gleason yeah, <laughs> to, <don't> think- <laughs> to put Lane Cove <laughs> after Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't think they realise that that's... The juxtaposition is that it's they pretty need to, shit. They need to do the comedy course. But they sent him a tea towel, Tom Gleason, a tea towel, which has got all the highlights of Lane Cove on it. Uh, a garlo. So, so well, <laughs> let's go through them. And, Laura, some of them are so funny. Um, Lane Cove, it's just at the top. So this is the tea towel, right? So it's, like, uh-huh. got all different fonts <coughs> and all different things that are highlights. Lane Cove... T- 2066, that's the postcode. You didn't get that on your knuckles, Laura? No, no. I did. Not no. yet. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one day. Uh, the Burns Bay Bookery. Don't know what that is. I don't, I don't either, That's actually. the headliner? That's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner at the Longy. So mm. you, oh, the, yeah. lo- the oh, Longy, yeah. the um, Greenwich Baths. Is that a thing? It's a thing. That's more of yeah. That's more of your Lane Cove East. I'm not okay. so familiar with right, that. Right, right. I think they're trying to. I think they've thrown the net wide for anything with the word Lane Cove in it here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This one's pretty lame. Homework in the library. <laughs> <laughs> not, not if Laura has anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if that's really uh, if you, that's number four on your list. Uh, the Bandstand, Pottery Green, Sport at Blackman Park, Riverview, Longerville. Uh, Longyville, what's the street? Longyville. Longyville. So there's a name in streets now, right? Yeah. Bowling at the Diddy. I don't know what that is. They're just making shit Way up to now. prove that your suburb's like cool and unique by naming things every suburb has. We've got a park. Yeah, yeah A yeah. library. Some streets. Some streets. <laughs> Look, this it is a good library. <laughs> yeah, it's no Marrickville, but it's all right. The, yeah. the, it goes the Plaza, Lane Cove West. They're just naming parts of Lane Cove now. <laughs> <laughs> Greenwich, Tambourine Bay. Uh, this one's great. Hashtag not boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> and then uh, York's Corner. So they're just, 
I, I mean, do you know, does any of them sound familiar in terms of highlights of Lane Cove? Honestly, I haven't heard of half of those things. <laughs> but um, the main one is dinner at the Longy. Like, so my, the parents, my parents actually went to the Longy for dinner for the first time. Like, they've been very careful about COVID. They've mm. been staying home. They went out. They had to use their diner discover vouchers. They went to the Longy. Mm-hmm. Guess who got COVID last week? Oh, oh no. Yeah. no! First time out in ages. Jeez. Oh, Two dinners in a row at the Longy. Put yeah. that on a tea towel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was interesting because you know Lane Cove Classic North Shore. It's got. It's always the cliche is it's so boring, nothing happens. Um, but that Longview Road or whatever was used as. King's Cross in the Underbelly series when they like did the 80s, like the Gold Mile or whatever. So what? every day when they would film, they would just basically dress the shops up in like old neon and recreate like Porky's and all the famous like strip clubs, but it was just from fucking Lane Cove. It's like right? the opposite of that. Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> some very, that set designer should get an Emmy or whatever. I know. Exactly. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> to walk past and spot that, but that's a little King's Cross in the 80s. Yeah. You know? It's like painting a horse to be a cow in a movie, <laughs> yeah. you know, or whatever. It's like very fucking, yeah. like, that's well, that's very cool. I, I wanted to that. talk about the Longy because, uh, I mean, I have some history with the Longy, but I also have a very good friend and someone who listens to the podcast who used to work at the Longy. And uh, the, there wasn't much on this. So, cause I, so I think the young, the Liberal Party did some good damage control. But apparently... <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty used to it by now. But apparently, like, yeah, yeah. But apparently like, there was got, like a, the Lane Cove seat was held by this bloke, Anthony Roberts. I think he still might hold yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, there was a thing about how like a young Liberals flying squad was sent in to help the seat of Lane Cove to do damage control before the election. So they're going around like stumping for Liberals. And like this Anthony Roberts, his position was thought to be safe. Um, but then they became nervous that negative sentiment uh, towards the coalition would sleep, sweep Lane Cove over to like Labour. And uh, Mr. Roberts was hurt by reports that he was asked to leave the Longerville Hotel following an incident. Mm. But then he came out and said, like, there was no incident. I left of my own volition because I was actually being bullied by other people. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, I've heard that before. And yeah. <laughs> my, my friend who worked there allegedly said that that is not true and the oh. guy was just fucking annihilated. Really? And running his mouth and they were like, you got to go, man. And he was the Stop local bullying me. Yeah. premier, like the member yeah, of the yeah, parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I say allegedly so we don't get sued, but I mean, <laughs> he's not going to listen to this. But, uh, <laughs> but also, yeah, uh, another story. This is just like a such a dumb local thing because they, my friend used to um, do, you know, like staff drinks after the bar is closed. They used to do yeah, lock-ins yeah. and drink, but they would sit. So the Longerville Hotel is like on a corner and there's like a two lane road that's pretty busy, but at 2 a.m. it's not very busy. So what they used to do was sit outside on a bench with bottles. And when they were finished, they would lob them across the road into this spin effects bush that was there. Mm-hmm. The, the, they'd lob it in and they'd hear the bottles crack. They'd just be like, hell yeah, let's keep doing it. <laughs> and then below them was like where the rangers worked um, for the council. So they'd just do that. And they swore that like this bush Little bush, it's gone now, just used to, like, hold bottles because no one ever cleaned it out, but, like, you could never see the bottles. Like, the bottles were always gone, even though every time you chucked a bottle, you could hear the mistaken, like, the unmistakable sound of glass hitting gr- glass. So they would just lob the bottles, and this is over, like, a two-lane street, so they're lobbing it across, it's landing in the bush, and they're like, fuck, yeah, the bush that eats the bottles. <laughs> and then... It's like, goes to Narnia or yeah, something. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're eventually like, someone must be cleaning it up, but you can still hear the bottle. So they must be there, but eventually the council removed the bush, and when they did, there was just like a mass graveyard of bottles <laughs> underneath. There's just like hundreds and hundreds of bottles just lying there that were contributed by the staff of the Longerville uh, in the early 2000s. How bored must yeah? yeah. I, I just love how that. That's just like that is yeah. Let's do that. Fun. This kind of doesn't prove hashtag not boring. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> like, let's have some fun and like oh, I just love this guy. Again. This guy getting fucking annihilated, blackout drunk, and then claiming he was bullied like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just perfect euphemism. Like, you know, that guy is a bit of a victim of bullying last night, if you yeah. know what I mean. The security yeah. guys bullied me. <laughs> they picked me up off the floor and they said I can't I also, I also had a mate who I knew from high school who got kicked out of the longy because he broke the toilet cistern trying to have sex in there. Mm-hmm. So, like, he broke with, it With up. the cistern? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was trying to fuck the toilet. <laughs> no, yeah, he... 
He brought a. It happened again. <laughs> <laughs> he brought a lovely woman in there, and they. I think they got a bit too aggressive in their lo- love making in the longy toilets, and yeah, the system came off. And <laughs> bro, you still <laughs> call it love making in the toilets. That's the only time where no, we're copulating. What if you make love in a toilet? It's still love making. <laughs> Break a toilet making love. Oh, <laughs> That's God. like this guy know, did. They're fucking, and she's like, "Oh no, it broke." And she's like, "Oh no, the condoms." <laughs> <laughs> no, the sister. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of water around. Shit here. everywhere. Uh, oh my God. Did you say no drunken antics for in, well, in Lane Cove? Yeah, I do remember. I think my biggest night at the Longy um, was someone's birthday. Someone from my first high school. And I just remember getting really drunk on gin and tonics and mm, just having. Dangerous. It was emotional. Yeah. yeah. Just having a like full like nostalgia, like depressive episode in the longing, which <laughs> it doesn't sound as fun as breaking a cistern. Like, no. yeah. It's fun in its own way. Too many G&Ts. Yeah. yeah. They'll do that to you. Oh, yeah. Really got really blue, got really melancholic. Yeah. Mm. But, um, yeah, I haven't been back since then. I think it's bad vibes. <laughs> bad it's like a nostalgia fueled melancholia. Yeah. So you're just like, I. I grew up here, man. Yeah, and then no. just melting down. Yeah, pretty much. That was about the size of it. <laughs> was yeah. it? Was it like a, a good old days kind of thing? Like the best days are behind me, or are you just like I hated this because I think it was like I don't like this guy whose birthday it is. That's less of a general melancholy or about yeah. the suburb. That's just a dislike. More, a very specific <laughs> yeah. agenda against one person. Yeah, it was bad vibes. Oh, um, no. What was this guy? Let's get the goss. Okay, so... <laughs> I he think held the liberal seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was being very obnoxious and some people started bullying him. No, <laughs> I... Yeah, I think that's the thing of when you go back and you hang out with your friends from high school. Like, right. sometimes it's amazing. Sometimes it's like, yes, we're vibing, we're having a great time, we're talking about the good old days. Other times it's like, I can't be here. Like, yeah. this is yeah. Yeah. Guys not for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, Man. cannot relate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> love it every I time. Say, Drew, Drew hung out with two of my high school mates and basically regressed. <laughs> and was just like, remember when we were in grade twelve? And like, no, who are you? <laughs> they loved me. <laughs> they did. So I should have moved to Queenbeer. You essentially. should have. I yeah, should have just gone, yeah, absolutely. Gone to, gone to Queen Bo High. We well, had a great time. Easy to be fifteen. Get your tractor license. Well, yeah. your your school as well was in the news. The St Andrews Cathedral was in the news mm-hmm. in two thousand eighteen. Because the headmaster had to apologize over a uniform check that girls uh, that was forcing girls to unpick the hem of their skirt to make it longer. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so basically, it's a very was, private school scandal. Yeah, 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 it's the most private school thing ever. But the, so there was this Wednesday, like there was a group meeting with all the students, and then they released them, and then they're like, uh, "Girls, stay behind." And they forced them to stay behind because there were issues with uniform compliance. And then basically a sibling of a student went on social media and said, on Monday night, all the year 12 girls received an email that stated that a skirt check would be coming at the year meeting happening on Wednesday. And then they were informed several times that the skirt must be on their knee and not above. And at the end of the year meeting, all the boys were told to leave. The doors were closed and the girls were informed that their skirts were too short and they had to use unpickers provided to them to lengthen them themselves. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So that was it, just to get like women used to their future careers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's part of home, man. Yeah. Yeah. They, chucked, they chucked them 70% of an unpicker as well. And they said, do what you can with this. <laughs> but they said, um, basically, the social media post added that the girls were yelled at multiple times and then they were made to kneel on the ground to check their skirt length. Oh my so, well, that, that, But isn't it the uniform? That's private school, right? Don't they yeah. issue the uniform to the girls? Yeah, issue it correctly. In the what it is, is like yeah, people right? issue Am the I, uniform, I'm, but then people are like, this is ugly, and then you get a little needle, I assume, and hem the skirt Oh, so up. they were hemming oh, okay. it, and then yeah. they're saying undo the... D-. I thought it was like... You know, no, they weren't like these standard issue the school re- things <laughs> are too short. <laughs> we gotta, we got to add fabric to them. Right. But um, yeah, so they were saying that like the... The staff member knelt on the ground to show the girls how to test the length of the skirt, and this is like eighteen-year-old girls being like, "What the fuck? What Come year on, was man. this? This 40s? is year. This is this was two years ago, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> two thousand nineteen, <laughs> and then it said." Uh, it said that like they made the student students copy the staff member by kneeling down to check the skirts. This is and like then, you, when you play footy, you have to kneel down to check your fingernails and your studs and your boot. Like 
But at school to check your fucking... Yeah, I guess with more rampant misogyny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, this what happened to me once in 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I made sure my fingernails. It, it, it didn't allow me to wear knuckle dusters. <laughs> <laughs> we have trouble recruiting women to our five-a-side. This is why we make everyone kneel down and check That's their right. yeah. Yeah. We check say their no stars, Check their fingernails. That's yeah. right. We're yeah. constantly <laughs> getting Drew to unhem his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, I can't see it. Because we say, Drew, these are too erotic. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to play? Yeah, you can see your fly's <laughs> eyes, mate. So yeah, the um, basically the <laughs> the social media like post gained traction, and so the school was left with a bit of egg on their play- face because I think it got some media coverage. And then like parents emailed the headmaster saying like, "Hey, we support the uniform standards, but don't be fucking dickheads about it and do this." And then so the headmaster had to apologize publicly to the girls, saying that he didn't respect their process and that they wanted to give them more warning and options in the future and affect a co- cooperative and collaborative response. And basically he said, he then blamed the fact that he was like, the uniform check is based on the fact that there are speech, there's speech night coming up, which is why we did it. Speech and, night. Yeah. Uh, you know speech night? Like presentation. Night. Yeah. Right, it's okay. like the end of year, the boring thing that you always try and get out of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unless okay. you win a prize, prize for German every year. <laughs> <laughs> you want German? Prize yeah. for German? Yeah. I was the only kid in my school and my year to take extension German. <laughs> I had to, I had to, what? And, and you won a prize every year? I won, no, well, I won for regular German in our like, class of like, 10. Award for the biggest loser. <laughs> <laughs> the only idiot who took extension But extension German. German, yeah, I had to go to school like 7.30 before it started and have one-on-one lessons with my teacher. Oh, wow. My God. And you had to go up on stage and accept that award? Uh, year 12, I didn't go. I just, because they were like, it's compulsory. And I was like, well, I've graduated. What are you going to do? Because, mm-hmm. I, you know, I've, I'm kind of a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I chose not to accept my prize for three years in German. <laughs> Fucking getting up oh, at 7.30. Yeah, it was pretty cool because then I'd have a free period and I could go home after Sounds that. like a Guten Morgen for me. <laughs> yeah, it was a good. Yeah. There we go. See, oh, some competition. <laughs> <over here. laughs> if I had him in my year, I may, maybe would have finished second. What's 7.30 in German, James? Oh, it would be hab acht because it's it's like the when you say seven thirty, you say half eight because it's half two eight. Right. So you don't say half seven. That would be six thirty. Okay. Well, <laughs> Edu- <we go>. Educational. <laughs> Is that why the Germans are always early? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's very a efficient. Very British thing as well to say half seven, half eight. Is it? Is it? <laughs> Did I speak that up? Don't just look at me. Why would I fucking know? This guy lived there for fucking eight years. Oh, I you're arguing with doing. him and you're looking at me for backup. I think I've heard that on TV before. But yeah, that was it. That was St. Andrew's Cathedral. That's what I wow. found. Mm. Did you get any awards there, Laura? And it, were you you're a good student or any of the schools? Hottest riffs. I can go <laughs> Jack, obviously. Um, no, I, and that never happened to me, but I do remember being like, the difference between public school and private school was that they made stupid rules that didn't make sense. Yeah. Mm. Right. Like, did did you guys go to... I went to a public school and I was just yeah. thinking about that because I think the girls still cop like a bit of shit for what to wear. Like, as in, it wasn't so much like you have to wear this exact uniform, but it was like if you wore a skirt too short, they would absolutely be silly. But the guys just wear anything. I knew this guy, he would... we just have a white polo was our shirt. Yeah, same. Mm. And he would just wear his dad's, like, his painting business shirt, you yeah, know, it's like his dad's it. painting logo on the front because he's like, oh, I don't know, it's in the wash. My yeah. other shirt, it's free Just, advertising. yeah. And yeah. so he's walking around like, you know, Frankston's painting or some shit like that, <laughs> and no one could care less. Like yeah. the school could not give a shit. Well, it doesn't matter, right? Like what you're wearing on your shirt doesn't affect your ability to like learn and cooperate no. with other children. But I do remember like the biggest example of that for me was when it was really hot and we were in assembly. And the principal was like, look, I know it's really hot, but like everyone has to wear their blazer. Yeah. And I'm just mm. like, what are you talking about? So like stupid. at my old high school, they'd be like, okay, everybody, like I know people have been bringing knives to school and like let's maybe <laughs> just not do that and think yeah. about, you know, people are fighting behind Chatswood Station and if people could just not, you know, have gang violence at Chatswood <laughs> Station. And then I go to this other school and they're like, yeah, no, you need to wear your blazer even when it's 40 degrees. I'm like, what is this? I think they think they they think that there's no fighting at that school because people are wearing their blazer because mm. you can't go down to Chatswood Station and have a brawl wearing a blazer. Like, I, ge- I think yeah. they genuinely Oh, you don't have that. the freedom to Yeah, I yeah, think they think yeah. this is like, like a straight jacket. you know, yeah. <laughs> dress for the 
kids yeah. you want. Do you know like you know yeah. what I mean? Like oh, the kids absolutely. dress up. Sure. But if they turn up Jack's got his blazer on just full of half dissected frogs. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like Lunch? I'm loading up. Dinner? <laughs> <laughs> These are my frog friends. <laughs> I hate I hate that stuff. Like Wimbledon's on right now and they make you wear all white and you yeah. can't wear anything else. And yeah. Kyrgios walked out in red shoes, not to play, just to Walk out into the thing and then he change into white. Man, did you watch and that, like, that fucking journalist? He was like, yeah. So you think you're above the law? You think then? you're above the yeah. law? Then? Like, you're wearing curious a red shirt. He's wearing a red shirt. <laughs> and then he played in your stupid. So it'd be like going to school, like, you know, not wearing a blazer and then putting it on as you came through the gate. And like, did you wear it on the, walk, on the walkover? Yeah. You know, it's so stupid. And I was quite like, I don't know. I was also a bad bad kid, so I was like, you know, oh, this like, is... Um, making trouble? Yeah, well, just didn't really like it when things were not fair and when things didn't make sense. Okay. Like when there were rules that were stupid. Yep. It's like I'll follow rules if they're actually like, you know, getting along or this is how you can learn, I think you yeah. know, maths. But mm. when it's like, no, you need to do this arbitrary thing for no reason, I was like, oh, no. Nah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I was only wearing hats in class. I'd always have my... Ba- like. Wait had a hat and they'd be like, take your hat off, we're indoors. Mm. And I'd be like, that's stupid. And yeah. I'd take it off and then like two minutes later, i put it back on. Oh, yeah. man, this yeah. kid. Look at this <laughs> rebel over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was you a could, bad boy. You can see why he valued his teenage years <laughs> so much with <laughs> rebellion like that. A lot that. of great hats. Yeah, so I only lasted one year at the private school. Damn. Yeah. They, didn't, they couldn't handle Laura. I think I couldn't handle <laughs> 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 I, I want to talk about this, which is a uh, something I found in Lane Cove. I don't know if you know of it. I don't know uh, when uh, it popped up in 2012. But I was looking into a, uh, related to this though. Big the big Scientology campus is in Chatswood. Yeah, and I was looking at that, and I was like, "That's pretty interesting." But then I found about another church or cult, if you will. Um, but it's in Lane Cove. They're head, their Australian headquarters. Are they all cults? Yeah, I know. I'm Sorry, I was, watching, <laughs> I was watching Christopher Hitchens clips no, I'm last gonna, night. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go Ricky Gervais here. Um, <laughs> Happy Science. Have you guys heard of Happy Science? No. This this no. place is crazy. It's on the Pacific Highway, Lane Cove, right near the Great Northern Hotel. Okay. Ah, yeah. You, know you the can Great cook Northern? your own steak at the Great Northern Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, I don't think. No. Yeah. But they used to have a free pasta bar as well, and you better believe I would fill up on free pasta. <laughs> And you got taken to court by the, <laughs> suing them because they stopped. <laughs> they told you to leave, and yeah, you're like, "I yeah. left on my own volition." <laughs> we disagreed on what free and unlimited meant. But um, <laughs> happy science, yeah. So it's uh, their, their Australian headquarters are in yeah on the highway there. They're um, basically founded by this guy. He was a Japanese stock trader. He was based in New York, and he left finance after the '87 Wall Street crash. Founded a new spiritual group called Happy Science. And uh, they believe in reincarnation and, and that making money is a legitimate path to happiness. So this guy's a stock trader and he's like, I'm just going to, you know, still be a scumbag stock That's trader. That's a very Lane okay. Cove attitude, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, they found the right <laughs> spot. But I just love that he's got all this weird, like, belief stuff. Uh, exploration of the mind, fourfold path, uh, love that gives wisdom. And then they also have, so it's very, like, positive and self-reflection. Yeah. But they also have a organized political wing called the Happiness Realization Party in Japan that promotes that Japan J- the Japan should expand their military and uh, acquire nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> what? And that they deny the historical events such as the Nanjing Massacre and South Korean comfort women. So they're like really hardcore political wing and then they've got this, oh, we're all about, you know. So it's basically like Scientology with like yeah. a nuclear right. Nuclear weapons. Not with <laughs> nuclear weapons. Be, be happy, live, multiple lives, make money, militarize Japan. <laughs> yeah. It's very strange. I and wonder if that's the group because apparently, you know, Ex prime minister got assassinated mm-hmm. yesterday, yeah. and apparently the guy said that they haven't released the details, but he said he was angry at him because of his association with some unnamed group, but it was clearly named, and it was something like that where it was like a cult or a thing that his mum got involved in, and it like he said it like ruined her life, and that's why he killed wow. him. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's it, there apparently in the eighties or nineties, um, there was a bunch of these in Japan that just popped up out of nowhere. All these like spiritual, cultish, Buddhist style religion-y things. Yep. And this was one, uh, ha- uh, Happy Science, is a pretty popular one. There was another one called um, Shinriko, who... who <laughs> sarin gas attack. Yeah, the sarin, they, they basically had a big, they went all terrorist. This this guy went sort of, you know, political, and these guys went terrorist. And they also tried to assassinate the founder of this, Ru Okawa. So there's all this weird Japanese cult 
gangs and you know like they're fighting and there's all this beef yeah and they've got the headquarters at lane Cove. and they've got well the australian like one right like so the australian uh uh, version is here but this guy this is what this guy believes so he's like the leader he's like the Elrond Hubbard, Hubbard of this thing, but he's still alive and he believes that um, he's the world's greatest psychic um, with higher powers than Jesus Christ Muhammad or Buddha um, put together by the way um, <laughs> He, he says I mean, that, if you're going to go big, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, just, yeah. Just don't just be like, yeah, I'm bigger than Jesus. This guy goes big. By the way, like this Lane yeah, Cove thing, I'm a Voltron of God. It's a church that's there and they have on Facebook, like, come by and we'll give you a sandwich. And, you know, it's just that weird, like, ah. get you in the door, the mm-hmm. spiritual what readiness. kind of sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's there. He's like, free pasta bar at Great Northern. Maybe, maybe we should do a little trip to Lane Cove <laughs> see what this is all about. Convert yeah. and fucking I'd rather a sandwich than a personality test. Well, that, that's what they do. <laughs> exactly. The spiritual stuff stuff and then and then you start to scratch the surface and i don't know why because surely this stuff puts more people off than it would ever drag in but he reckons that the earth was injured millions of years ago by a god from venus named el katare who's been reincarnated as all these um you know people over the years odin buddha some incan king and the latest in- incarnation is him is this guy right? right and so he has these big stadiums with ceremonies and at the start of them he leaps out of a mock ufo like big flying saucer clad in feathery angel wings with smoke machines going. This so is giving me big Iron Chef vibes. Yeah, he's like Iron Chef nuclear weapons or something. Yeah, it's but the, the, the funny thing is it's like uh, Japan is such a weird culture because it's all just intertwined. Like this, they, apparently for the church, they've just started releasing all these anime films that are like... I'm listening. But the same animation studio that made like Digimon and Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z, this church Fuck just around. commissioned them to make all these films. And it's that the law of the sun, mystical laws, laws of the universe part one and the law of the universe part zero for some reason. They're doing prequels, you know. <laughs> and uh, in there, it's all this crazy anime stuff, but it's just what they actually believe, you know. What so people man? are like, you know, so they're saying that refugees from Atlantis founded Greece and there's an intergalactic space council with people on it like Isaac Newton and Gandhi. <laughs> and it's all in these animes. And people are like, it's a bit outlandish, but it's just anime. And they're like, no, this is real. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is uh, all real stuff. That is fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you give me half a bite of a Reuben and some guy jumps out of a UFO and then plays anime. I'd be like, do I get a ring and stand next to Isaac Newton? Like, this gets <laughs> even weird. So they, they reckon that hoverboarding aliens... Alien cat boys. Oh, hoverboards. Yeah. Yeah. Hoverboarding, that is sick. hoverboarding alien cat boys killed the dinosaurs, apparently. And there's this f- film sequence. Like samurai where pizza cat. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're like shooting dinosaurs from these hoverboards. Fuck, oh, I, am, I am all in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a happy scientist. Yeah. <laughs> so they're still there, but they got in a bunch of trouble or whatever. And oh. f- Firstly, they did a couple of silly things. In 2012, they got a bit of a presence in Uganda. But they got they made everyone in Uganda really upset because they booked the um, national stadium for a rally, which was they they overbooked from the when the sprinters were trying to run do time trials for the twenty twelve Olympics. So then all the runners had to use a, a local rubbish dump to <laughs> qualify for the Olympics, Jesus. and none of them qualified. So they're very upset no, in yeah, Uganda. Fucking tripping over broken <laughs> furniture. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they should show them the anime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think that might have worked. But then this this killed me. Well, these two things. But then, obviously, COVID. What do you think their stance on COVID is? Oh, <laughs> I reckon that. Alien Aliens. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Well, they're very anti-China as well, right? So it's Jap- okay. Japanese military, like, mm. you know, so... So, so they, um, they think China created it. So I was reading, I'm like, oh, well, I might be on board here. But uh, <laughs> according, <laughs> according to Happy Science, a virus was created as a bioweapon by the Chinese government in Wuhan. Okay. And then in a twist, it was unleashed by a UFO to punish the communists for their godless ways. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, they also sell um, uh, coronavirus-themed DVDs and CDs, which they say the sound alone of the DVD will give you the vaccine. Wow. So okay. if you play the DVD, you get vaccinated, uh-huh. and they're selling them for about $100. And it, there's... No footage, it's just sound. It's just they said if you yeah, if you don't know, you don't have to watch, you can do the ironing, but as long <laughs> as you get the sound. But um they also were doing in like they're getting people into the churches and playing this thing and now you're vaccinated or you've got immune boosting from this thing, and then they said, um, you gotta shut down the churches. Like this is during like the COVID lockdowns, obviously. So they started doing remote like Zoom 
vaccinations via DVD, <laughs> which is uh, great. But then this killed me. In uh, 2019, they got in a bit of trouble in the UK. Well, not in trouble, just a bit of um, a, a bit of notoriety in the UK when the, all these posters were coming out um, a- announcing that they were going to be holding a seance of Margaret Thatcher. So uh, <laughs> the guy was going to channel Margaret Thatcher and <laughs> asked her what she thought about Brexit. <laughs> what does she think about the current Brexit issue? Was she an angel or devil? Where is her spirit now? Her current messages to the people in the UK and scan the QR code to come down and uh, check in and, and whatever. So that was on and the 13th of September, 2019, five pounds to, to enter and to listen. And oh, wow. um, apparently Akawa, it's just a video a streaming of him in Japan. And he's saying it may take some time. It'll take a little, little bit of time to uh, to channel Margaret Thatcher. And then uh, after a little while, he starts screaming out, Dennis, Dennis, you know, Margaret Thatcher's husband. <laughs> so he's yeah. he's all of a sudden, he's Margaret Thatcher calling for her husband, Dennis. <laughs> and um, <laughs> apparently one of the reporters there who are all like happy science people, yeah. were like, she's here. Oh, my. And then he starts going, I am the prime minister. I am still Iron Lady. <laughs> And he says, I'm a hot... Uh, and then they say, what do you think about trade unions? Okay. And he says, I hate them. And like, it's really <laughs> it's her. her. It's 100%. really her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. This so, makes sense. Yeah, Was yeah. he speaking in English or Japanese? Well, uh, you want me to do an impression of him? No. Doing <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, in English. Because okay. it's for the Brit- it's for streaming to the people in the UK, yeah, right? Okay. So he, they, they start asking, what about... What do you think about the UK Labour Party? They They're bad. You know, bring it on. And they're like, yes, this is absolutely Margaret Thatcher. And then uh, Margaret Thatcher starts advising on Japanese policy. Attack Korea, she advises. <laughs> <laughs> attack China, attack. <laughs> Japan must attack. And she, she cannot, she cannot uh, understand for the life of her why Japanese don't buy nuclear weapons. Just buy them from the USA. And then they asked her, uh, someone asked what she thinks about the US president. Um, uh which, Which I, would have been Trump? No, sorry. Uh, who, about the US president in 2013. Ah. She gets confused. So, uh, I think it's the guy's confused about it. So he starts saying, Obama. Well, Obama is the president. And then they say, what do you think about Obama? Kill him. <laughs> then oh. fire him. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, so that's... Uh, the cart before the horse. Yeah, there, yeah. Man. That's happy science. So they're in Lane Cove, uh, 516 Pacific Highway. They've got sandwiches. Yeah. They do, uh, yeah. if you want to get they've vaxxed. Anime. Anime. Yeah. They, they've got all Talk sorts of things Maggie. happening. Talk to Maggie. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they're... In, They've got all the things happening there, so <laughs> wow. I know that is intense. I know. Well, when I need life advice, I also do a seance and <laughs> yeah. of Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask her a series of questions about my personal life. Yeah. You know, should I quit my job? Etc. Yeah. yeah. Should I pay my? Should uni I quit fees? my job? Yeah. You should buy nuclear weapons and give them to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should do. Come but on, how, Maggie? Maggie? Take, how? take the severance pay, Laura. <laughs> oh. Wow. Um, I've got a bit of a mystery, uh, a bit of a murder mystery here from, mm. from Lane Cove. I don't know if okay. you've ever heard of the famous Bogle Chandler case. No. Nope. Not ringing any bells? No. Nope. Mm. Um, Chandler, huh? <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good Alex, up. you want to do your thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Could I be any more dead? <laughs> there we you got, got it. Um, so just as a background, this is, it refer the Bogle, Bogle Chandler case refers to the two different people, mysteri- right? two different people. Yeah, yeah. And I so it refers to the unfortunately m- named human of all time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly he, killed themselves. He's beautiful. <laughs> We're going to name him Bogle. <laughs> well, sure, Mrs. Chandler? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, the ghost of Margaret Thatcher <laughs> told me. Yeah, the ghost could of Margaret I, Thatcher. Could I be more sure? <laughs> <laughs> could I be more Bogle? <laughs> I think Bogle's real name is worse than Bogle Chandler. So it refers to the mysterious deaths of Gilbert Bogle. Oh, man. Man. And oh, Margaret oh. Chandler. Uh, Margaret and th- Thatcher? So this occurred on the banks of the Lane Cove River uh, on the 1st of January 1963. It's one of the oldest cold cases in New South Wales. And your parents are around, like, have they been in Lane Cove forever? Or? Uh, so we moved there when I was, like, two, and okay. they still live there. Right, your so they parents' yeah. names, Gilbert Bogle. <laughs> <laughs> parents are uh, mm, infamously no murdered. <laughs> <laughs> mysteriously. Yeah. Um, so Gilbert Bogle is born in 1924. He's a physicist who worked at CSIRO, but on the Sydney Uni campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's married with a couple of kids. He was widely considered to be like one of the most brilliant scientists of the day, Rhodes Scholar, all that business. Um, Margaret Chandler, she was born in 34. She was married to Jeffrey Chandler, who was a co-worker of, of Bogle's at CSIRO. Mm-hmm. Um, and the police, when they were sort of researching his life, they discovered that Bogle had had 
casual relationships with a lot of other women, uh, a player. some of whom he took to parks. So he oh, so he's a Henry Hastings style guy. <laughs> <laughs> Another road scholar. <laughs> he's like, oh god, I know the spot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, guys like, from Lane Cove will tell you they know a spot, and it's just the Lane Cove River. Yeah. And he pulls out this tea towel, and he's like, pick one. You know? <laughs> Pottery green, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We get to the library for one. Uh, um, so they they met at a um, cr- like a Christmas sort of barbecue do um, in 1962. Uh, and on the way home, Chandler told her husband Jeffrey that she was quite taken with Bogle, and Jeff- <laughs> and Jeffrey. Hold on, hold on. The, the wife told the husband. The wife told her husband so that she's like, man, that so Bogle guy. Kind of a like, hey, we, s- ass. we saw you from across the room, and we like <laughs> we your like vibe. Your yeah, a little bit oh. because um, so he they he told police that him and his wife had an understanding, and he told her if you want to take this. Is this <laughs> Next you're going to be like, Bogle had a very bad theory and he was like, it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. The whole chemistry lab's exploding. He's like, fine, it's fine. I'm actually a very good scientist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fuck, I love it. Sorry. Science is hard, guys. <laughs> 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 oh, that killed me. Uh, yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> um, so he, he said to his wife, if you want to take Gib as a lover, if it would make you happy, just do it. Hell yeah. So then yes. flash forward a couple of, uh, a week. This is New Year's Eve 1962. They all attend a party uh, held by another colleague from um, the CSIRO. This is in Chatswood. And the Chandlers arrive at about 10 p.m. And um, at about 11.30, Chandler, the husband Chandler departs alone to drive to another uh, push party. So these these guys were part of this, like, you know, like at The Rocks, we did the push gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, so it's like it's like intellectual lefty. That's right. Yeah, I can't Bohem- believe Bohemian. this was happening in Lane Cove. That's crazy. Free, to yeah. me. they're all about like anarchism, anarchism, free love, oh, all that yeah. shit, anti censorship, like, big like lefty arts hub. It was like Jermaine Greer, Clive James, like mm-hmm. all these these mm-hmm. kind of. What guys, time right? period is this again? Sixties. Yeah. Um, so he went to another push party and he met up with one of his side pieces, Pamela Logan, um, and they drove, like they fucked off to her house. And then Chandler comes back to the Christmas party, the Chatswood, sorry, the news party at Chatswood at 2.30. Um, and he decides to part alone because Mrs. Chandler, she's like, nah, me and, Bo- me and Bogle are hitting it off here. Um, so Bogle and Chandler then left the party at around 4 a.m., and they drove to the nearby Lane Cove River, which is known like it was a known lover's lane. Ooh. Um, mm. But what happened next is still unclear, but several hours later, both their bodies were found. Oh, okay. So a bit of a doom, doom, doom. Mm. Um, so this is the state of the bodies. Bogle's body was discovered near Fuller's Bridge by two youths searching for golf balls. Uh, they saw his body, presumably. My brothers. Like <laughs> <just> <laughs> yeah. They saw his body and they thought he was just a drunk guy. And then they returned a few hours later to find he hadn't moved and his face had turned blue, which I think is that's probably the key indicator there. Right, okay. So they fuck off to get help. Police arrive at the scene. They discover that his body was half undressed. So somebody had placed his pants over the back of his legs in such a way to make him look like he was dressed. Yeah. But they went on. They just laid him like over his body. Um, and his jacket was laid again, like on his back. So he's nude, but someone had put his clothes sort of back onto him. And the right spots, like his undies on there, and yeah. his like hat, but <laughs> yeah, none yeah. of it's on. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, shortly after that, Mrs. Chandler's body was discovered short distance away. She was in also in a state of undress, and her body had been covered up with a broken uh, cardboard beer box. Uh, That's what she was wearing, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Fancy dress yeah. <laughs> Um. So it was initially believed that basically that she had covered body, Bogle's body first and then her own, um, but a close examination suggested that somebody had covered her body as well. Mm-hmm. So straight away the theories start flying, right? So and there's, is there any, like, there's no fucking stab wounds or anything, No right? stab wounds. They're just dead. No outside um, indicated that there was any violence or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, as you might imagine, the case attracts instant publicity because it's high society party, wife swapping in the conservative 60s, um, unidentified third person and some sort of poisoning. It was pretty clear straight away there was some sort of poison, right? Um, because there was vomit and shit everywhere. <laughs> that was the big. That was okay. the big indicator. Yeah. Um, and because this guy, right, this is right in the midst of the Cold War. This guy's working. He's a scientist working at CSIRO. 
there was rumors that he was doing like research on adv- like futuristic weaponry to like mm. fight the Soviets and that maybe he got assassinated by the Soviets. Okay. Um, and there's like, you know, theories that maybe he was a double agent, all sorts of stuff. There was, the police had like hundreds of theories they had to investigate. One was an LSD that maybe they OD'd on LSD. That was one of the big theories. A um, few things wrong with that theory. First was that the, um, they did some analysis, found no trace of LSD in their system. But then in 96, they sent some of the tissue to America and they found that there was some LSD and they were like, Oh fuck. Then they did an even more like sensitive scan and they found, no, there was no LSD. But then the big, uh, more convincing is that there's never been a documented human death from an LSD overdose. <laughs> so they were just like, this could be a theory. This would be the first ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LSD and that took overdose. 30 years. That took 30, <laughs> 30 years. Right. Wow. Right. And First so LSD overdose in Lane Cove. That's yeah. quite a claim. <laughs> yeah. That's a monument for sure. Um, well, fucking be on that tea towel. For, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so then in 2006, a documentary comes out uh, released by a filmmaker, Peter Butt. Okay. And I've, written, nice. I've written pause for laughs there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, this is, you know, this has been a famous cold case. Better than Bogle Butt or something. <laughs> yeah. that so yeah. Gilbert Butt. Um, and he comes out with his explosive new theory. And he basically, he essentially um, solves the mystery, but ne- it's never been like fully confirmed, but he's, this is his theory. Um, so in the 40s and 50s, the local council received scores of letters from residents complaining about the smell of rotten eggs coming from the river, which was causing people to like, be nauseous and you know breathing difficulties and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there was a series of massive fish kills. And like, so there's just always been issues with this river and people are like, what the fuck? Why does it stink? You know, it's making is it, me they, sick. Were, what, were they dumping shit in it? Like, well, eventually they discovered that a factory had been pumping its waste into the river since the 1890s. Oh shit. Fuck. Mm. Okay. And, um, and the wor- and it was, there was like a buildup of, uh, hydrogen sulfide gas, which has caused the smells of, of rotten eggs. Uh, and the worst affected location was within a quarter mile of exactly where their bodies were found. Uh, and apparently the conditions on the night was very, it was quite cool and very still, uh, which allows high concentrations of gas to accumulate. Oh yeah, it was cool. There was wife swapping. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically the area where they sort of went for their little tryst was, um, you, you couldn't find a more perfect condition for the buildup of excess, um, hydrogen sulfide. And, this um, is how Hastings is going to die too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing you could take him out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... They had like there was some purple discoloration on their skin. Oh, sorry, in their blood, which is characteristic of hydrogen sulfide poisoning. But it oh. just wasn't picked up at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so years later, like a British forensic scientist, um, he basically concluded, yeah, they were gassed for sure. That's so the river like just has all this shit in it, and it just what bubbles up out of the water and just releases, yes. like you know, downstream at some point. And they just got hit with a big cloud of it at, at one point. That's right. Whoa, fuck. Which is a fucking horror movie. Really. Yeah, it's, it's like the mist terrifying. or something. Yeah, but it still doesn't explain why their bodies were covered up. You know why someone would go to the lengths if they didn't mm. murder them. So the yeah, the, the cloud just forms an arm <laughs> and just like cartoonishly <laughs> puts it over the top, tucks them in. No one will know. <laughs> This so was someone, investigated. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. This is inv- so I was going to solve it, but you th- <laughs> Well, <laughs> if you want to throw a theory <laughs> out, I can... I can Alex's say cloud arm theory. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to do some to tests. Me, <laughs> the, the latest member of the happy science religion. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, the police basically thought that it wasn't covered by a murderer, but a third person who may have covered them for modesty. You know, he discovered the bodies, didn't want to be... Um, didn't want to get involved. So an initial suspect was a voyeur who contacted police twice using different names. Um, but after interrogation, he was dismissed. Then the prime suspect was a greyhound trainer who um, walked his dogs daily on a path that basically passed, you know, that site where the bodies were found. And he came forward after his car was identified. And when interviewed by police, he claimed to have used a different path that day and denied seeing the bodies. Mm, uh, nice. Then his obituary, when he died in 1977, claimed that he was the first to see the body. <laughs> I know his family just like outed him in that one. Um, and then, the, so there was that theory that was him, um, w- which was supported, like the, the the idea that he covered them out of modesty reasons was supported uh, by claims that, direct quote, the man was known to be a prude. <laughs> like, I don't know how big of a prude you got to be to be known <laughs> like that. 
I also don't think you need to be a prude to be like, I might just want to put this dead, this, body. This dead body for <laughs> yeah. the cardboard. I mean, it's not even that. It's quite like put I, a cardboard box I, on a woman. I go the other like, way. Hey, listen, I reckon the say, known prude is defensive. For a guy that walks his dogs on a known lover's trish spot every time, you know? Mm. Like he's gone down there every time being like, no, I didn't see anything. Of course not. I don't even like going down there. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. hope that I'll see two people getting it on. This is lover's lane, right? I'm just yeah. looking at my map here. Yeah. <laughs> So you think he spread the rumor that he was a prude? Like, I think, I, I don't know I, yeah, I think he was like, I'm a prude, brother. But really, he's gone down there. That you so do you reckon a look. whoever's covered them up has gone down, seen two naked people, assume they're just passed out drunk Probably, and gone... Yeah. I might cover these people. I'm gonna, but why put the box on the woman? <laughs> yeah, like, that's exactly. such a weird Well, thing. that actually does fit with the prude thing. Because, like, if he was, like, you know, like a prude, repressed person, he'd probably put the clothes on the bloke and then the girl would be like, oh, I'm not touching the undergarments. Here's a, uh, here's a box of Carlton Dry. I'm going to put that on her. Maybe his greyhound did the woman and he did the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I reckon they enough. said he's a prude because someone tried to wife swap with him in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into it. Nah, I'm not into it. this prude. Oh. <laughs> Won't oh. throw his keys yeah. in the bowl. Probably wants or, to fuck his dog. You know? <laughs> or maybe he just didn't get selected. And he was like, ah, it's fine. I'm kind of a prude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm monogamous. Um, so that, that was kind of the end of that. You know, that's... Mystery Can you imagine solved, them right? like rooting and then they're like, do you smell that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's, it's sort of ruining the vibe. <laughs> and then he's, he's bleeding blood out of his eyeballs and she's like, it wasn't me. Well, th- in 2016, we've had uh, another development mm. who basically a witness. Who basically but this was 50 years ago. What are these people? Well, it's, I mean, it's such a like insane story. I guess. It, but so, kept yeah. people's like uh, interest the entire time. But in uh, 2016, a psychologist from Canberra came forward and said that he basically rescued this woman in Hague uh, Hague Park in Canberra. Um, She was about to be assaulted and he like intervened, was like, get out of here, guys. And then she um, she didn't want to go to the police. She didn't want to go to hospital, but she saw he had a St. Christopher medal around. um, Sorry, he saw she was wearing a St. Christopher medal around her neck and asked if she was a Catholic. And um, he said, would you like to be taken to a nun that he knew at this convent in, in... Monica and um, she broke down and she said she was having nightmares due to something she'd witnessed two years earlier at Lane Cove. Two mm. years? Oh, sorry. Yes. yes, so yes, yes. This was in 65. Mm-hmm. So she told this psychologist that her and her girlfriend at the time, and obviously this is like, you know, gay people, are, I think it was still illegal to yeah, 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 homosexuality, yeah. right? So oh, it's still illegal in Lane Cove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <just> localized. <laughs> just to, um, no one of the suburbs are boring. <laughs> um, she and her girlfriend, who was dressed as a man, had gone down to like have a secret tryst, and that's how undercover they had to be. She had to like dress her girlfriend up as a dude, and um, that that scenario like fed into evidence given by and by. This is just insane. So this was a direct quote from this article. The woman dressed as a man scenario feeds into evidence given by a one-armed voyeur, <laughs> Raymond Chalice, a police prime suspect who spoke of seeing a broad-shouldered man with blonde, longish hair at the back jump out of the bushes when he was creeping around the riverbank. <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck's going on. Down. One-armed voyeur, he's man? got to hold the mo- binoculars, but he can't jerk off now. Yeah, so yeah. He's, <laughs> he's like, oh, God, i got to figure this out. Oh, oh man. man, that is insane. So, yeah. So I so love how also the guy in 2016 came forward like i can't hold it anymore i once saved this woman at a park yeah. like, he's just so <laughs> yeah. excited to tell that part and of the he's, story. yeah he's telling the story five minutes is him recounting what she said and 50 minutes is like and then i punch this yeah. guy yeah. And i'm like you <laughs> want some man because i'm fucking here i never let a woman be assaulted um and this is how this woman said that it went down so she, this is her direct quote from the article at some point the woman said loudly why have you stopped he said nothing, and she asked him to keep on going. Then suddenly the woman grabbed her throat and made a strangling noise and got up and staggered off. Like, that's a fucking horror movie. Right. Mm. You're boning some guy, and then he stops, and you're like, what are you doing, man? Keep going. And he's, he's dying. dead. Like, that's, yeah. it kills you like that. Man. Oh, I, th- I thought it was literally like, yeah, yeah, you're just choking through it for so fun. So you're just, if, like, the, you're there, you're having the time of your life. So wait, is it is it, it still classed as unsolved? It sounds pretty solved to me. Well, officially... Officially unsolved because I guess I, I don't know how well, they can't. hard you can prove that. Yeah, but there's yeah, enough more, circumstantial. More or less, you'd be pretty happy to say that's how it went down, but it's Jesus not like you know, set in stone. 
Man. Yeah, that's just fucking. If I had a snow that. rotten eggs, I'm yeah, fucking yeah, bolting. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm getting from this is just everyone's fucking in Lane Cove National Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so much though. And, oh. if, oh. and if people aren't fucking, they're watching. <laughs> 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 you see a bloke with one arm getting around. <laughs> <laughs> the local that's voyeur crazy. community are down <laughs> yeah. there just swapping stories. Oh my jeez. So that's yeah, the Chandler Bogle case or well, the Unbe- Bogle Chandler. Unbelievable. Case. I got one more thing, a bit okay. of a more heartwarming thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is about the Lane the Cove. Ross Rachel case. <laughs> yeah, this is about the Ross and Rachel case. Uh, he, she got off the plane at the end. Um, this is about uh, the Lane Cove tunnel uh, because now it's apparently I didn't even know this is how dumb I am. The, like people invest money in the Lane Cove tunnel, but it's going bust right now because no one's using it because of COVID and people weren't traveling and stuff. But back in the day when it was being uh, constructed, there was a tunnel collapse that um, – spread through to Lane Cove and, like, demolished, like, collapsed the an apartment, apartment block. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Holy shit. What? And so, I basically, um, Lane Cove Tunnel collapses, apartment block. You could die at any time in Lane Cove. Oh, either, yeah. Either you're <laughs> yeah. <just> smelling <laughs> rotten eggs or your apartment falls through the fucking floor. Exactly. Have too many G&Ts. <laughs> feel a bit blue. Fall into a reverie. <laughs> But basically, a, a bomb squad robot helped rescue a woman's pet bird as police. <laughs> oh, I need to residents. see that Pixar movie. <laughs> <laughs> Back into a block of apartments, damage in a Sydney road tunnel collapse. So it says 50 people were evacu- evacuated when a section of the Lane Cove Tunnel project collapsed and it undermined an apartment. It left a corner of the block hanging over a massive hole. It said, with the hole now filled with concrete, residents from 21 of the units were briefly allowed home on Friday to collect a few personal belongings. They are accompanied by the police bomb squad personnel, and so they gathered all their clothes and effects as they were getting out of there, and basically the residents weren't allowed to go home because it was hanging over a gigantic sinkhole. And then a bomb squad robot was sent into the units to retrieve a pet bird forgotten by one of the residents when it was (laughs) evacuated. And the name of the bird was Tweety, a much-loved cockatiel belonging to Karen Bruce and Robert Colquhoun, and it was in a cage in the apartment that suffered the most damage in the collapse. And then so rescue and bomb squad disposal squad inspector Stephen McGilchrist said the decision was made to use the 26 kilo robot when officers heard Tweety chirping inside. So there's a little bird and they're like, we got to send in the bomb squad robot, which is adorable. So it says the (laughs) The mobile machine... explodes when it gets... (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) 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 They cut the wrong wire on the bird. (laughs) Cut the bird's head off. (laughs) So it says... a yellow wire snip. The mobile machine feeds like images back and it was used to clear a pathway and find the cage. And then they approached the doorway before plucking the bird to safety with a long pole. Reunited with the t- and it reunited with the two to three month old cockatiel, an emotional Miss Bruce held it up triumphantly <laughs> and then got it out of the cage for a cuddle. Tweety is a hand-raised cockatiel who likes daily contact, she explained, for why she was cuddling the bird. And then he (laughs) said, while left alone for two days, Tweety had water and seeds, so she is quite content, but it might be a quick rush to the vet, she said, before driving off with the bird on her shoulder. The bird bird needs therapy. It was left alone for two days and (laughs) then saved by a robot. (laughs) Can I just say, I don't think that these kind of resources, state resources, would have been made available in a safe labor seat. (laughs) 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 <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you want to go in there? Go. I for it. I couldn't find anything on this, but my friend who lived in Lane Cove swore that like when this uh, tower collapse happened, that Merrick and Rosso got in trouble because <laughs> uh-uh. I think it was Merrick like put a police hat on, a fake police hat, and like fooled the people guarding the hole. And was like, yeah, I need to get in there and inspect it. And they were like, uh, yes, sir. And so Merrick Watts went in and inspected the hole. Maybe and the then worst prank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, man, He's speaking, like, I, excuse me, officer, I need to get in there and do a Lebo accent. <laughs> 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 Just talking to the bird. Bully want a cracker. Bully want a kebab. Well, speaking of terrible pranks, American Rosso pulled, there was also uh, recently... Not recently, but when they're on the radio, they got in a lot of trouble for a campaign about like um, they got in trouble with the RTA for telling people to just deliberately run your fuel down and like 
break down in the middle of the road and if you did that like they'd pay for your fuel and someone broke down in lane cove tunnel and caused like this huge delay and they got in a lot of trouble because they were like the prank will be a bit of fun not realizing it would back traffic up for hours and hours so someone just in lane cove tunnel was like this would be a bit of fun run out of petrol and yeah they had to protest and climate yeah yeah Yeah. just yeah just to get a winner radio (laughs) (laughs) just to get merrick and rosso to pay for your fuel for a few days and then yeah 96 point nine got the person and put them up in a hotel for a couple of days that's so funny yeah that is i mean who's i think every now and then you see something pop up on social media that's like um you know like a delivery driver or something who's like on a bike in the lane came to clearly lost and just or didn't oh, yeah. you know or followed the map but didn't quite realize what they were getting themselves into i remember seeing a photo of someone just like driving past like what the fuck is this oh, man. If you with miss, a fucking lasagna yeah. in that thing <laughs> it's like, if you oh miss that God. exit to lane cove tunnel you're going to north sydney baby yeah. like that'll happen damn wow. all right so hey not that boring, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of stuff Fuck happening. Yeah. Wife swapping, fucking and dying of yeah. sulfurous <laughs> gas I, I, I did that. If those people wife swapped, fucked, and died, that's the most in- interesting thing that's ever happened in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Like that is yeah. like in one night, yeah. those totally. guys are dying, flooding up the heaven. I got I'm a hard like, quiz for you, Gleason. You've yeah. done your research. I'm <laughs> like, oh. Hey, did you see the tea towel? All right, come on, Northwood. Not we'd, love, we'd love to have you on. Top. <laughs> uh, I thought it was cool that I saw, once I saw um, a red belly black snake in Lane Cove National Park. Oh, yeah. 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 Another thing that go. could kill you. Yeah. Lane Cove's dangerous. Man. It is dangerous. <laughs> or just living the wild life yeah. non-stop. Yeah. <laughs> Especially my 75 year old dad still driving around and he can't turn his neck fully one way. So <laughs> that is that. Yeah. He's trying to run the gauge down on his field. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Merrick, what's told me to? <laughs> In the funniest accent. Oh, oh no, he's a radio national guy. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So, um, Laura, we're getting to the end of the podcast now, and we always like to ask people, if someone says, Laura, I'm coming to Lane Cove for 24 hours, I need an itinerary, what's something to do morning, afternoon, and night? What do you tell And I'm them? bringing my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So, morning, I'd say probably um, go down to the old folks' home and have a little coffee underneath the nursing home there. Oh, it's a Because it's good coffee or it's... No, just because it's like terrible vibes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like near where I grew up, like is not near the main Lane Cove shop. Mm, so if yep. you want to go anywhere, it's you have to cross walk. In like, the 80s. No, you have to walk like twenty five minutes. But then this um, this big old folks home opened up, and it's like the second one near my place, and they put a little cafe at the bottom for like community Cute. amenity. Oh, so that's, good. that's nice. Yeah, I'm assuming. It's like someone coming to visit me, my old place. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so maybe go have, take your nan for a coffee, the old folks. Or just home. chat to the old people there. They're yeah. probably a little bit lonely. No, it is. It's like people just coming to visit their grandparents for the first yeah. time in. Just be like, oh, I don't know. I don't think there's too many immigrants, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with you. But. It's a little bit like that. Yeah, <laughs> have a little coffee. Or you could go into Lane Cove and get yourself a coffee, sit in the pottery green there we go we got one yeah. through here if yeah. you need a reference to two towel at any <laughs> point you. Thank so you're going you're in the pottery green and then where where's lunch where's your lunch um or well, your afternoon activity yeah, yeah maybe you could pack a lunch and go for a walk in the national park okay okay Just take a gas mask with you <laughs> <laughs> no it's perfect. actually and really a pack beautiful. of condoms apparently <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and your binoculars yeah. yeah it's really beautiful there it's aside okay. from the murders and the I think they've Snakes. since cleaned up the river. Like, there's yeah. no chance of dying there from a. I feel like cleaned up those two bodies at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and then and then so that's a nice arvo. And then where's you gonna have dinner at the longy? You gotta go to the longy. Yeah, you gotta go to the longy. Get a GNT. Um, yeah. Have a GNT. Think I about your 17. life. <laughs> I think they call it the L and C now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you think it's Landon Cove, but it's Lauren Cole. And I can tell you, after I had seventeen GNTs, I was being bullied, and I. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think we go. Or maybe have a pizza from the pizza place. Oh, I did want to talk about this. Yeah. Um, I think after you have your dinner, you would want to go travel back in time 15 years and go to Blockbuster Video and spend a few hours picking oh, out a new beautiful. release. Oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. how long it so is that the error of Video shop shutting down 15 years? Oh, or 10 maybe. Yeah, no, I wasn't challenging. Just, I don't, you know, some of them hang well, on for a really long time. Yeah, I thought it would have been even earlier. I mean, I was hiring DVDs 
Oh, nine? I would have been, yeah, definitely. Like, at least all the way through high school, the blockbuster would have been a pretty big Mm. fixture for me. No, I mean, parties would have been a big (laughs) fixture. I was the blockbuster. (laughs) Blockbuster, I drove past a couple away onto the the parties, which I was invited to. (laughs) Let me ask you this, Laura. Mm. Are they doing five weeklies, five dollars? Oh, you know it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What five weeklies are you getting? Three men and a baby, three men three and a ninjas. Lady. Yeah, three ninjas. <laughs> three ninjas too. What five weeklies am I getting? Oh, actually, once I um the last kind of few years of the video store, I did um there was this old guy who works there and he was you know the old guy from the video store mm-hmm. who's like Kind of your hero, but you kind of know he's a massive loser. Just like <laughs> silver ponytail. Oh, and I yeah, I decided look. to start watching Buffy. I never watched Buffy when I was Good growing choice. up. I'm watching but it now. Nice. And I got like the five weeklies and whatever. He obviously You're watching it now. You've seen every episode like <laughs> eight times. Don't act like you just got yeah, into Buffy. Drew to a real, drew to a real. <laughs> anyway, one of the best compliments I've ever got is I take these five weeklies up to the counter and and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm just starting to get into Buffy and he looks at me and he's like I always knew you were a person of taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. With his silver ponytail. Yeah. The ponytail. Yeah, like, yeah oh, I was really into my it. ponytail at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks, man. That's I feel so seen. Cool. I feel seen. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, Perfect man. five weeklies. You and can we get got... those first five seasons of Buffy with that. Hell yeah. yeah. And the last question, Laura, is you, you've you made it in comedy more than you ever could imagine. You're on the store. Jack Wright's opening for you. Yeah, you bring, bring, <laughs> taking Jack on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all looking through the window of Jack. <laughs> he he's, in there. He I've taken up smoke. Yeah. <laughs> he's bringing his weird dissected frog friend. <laughs> but uh, you've met, done everything you wanted to do with comedy and you've made your millions. When all of a sudden done, would you settle down in Lang Hove? And it would take millions, by the way. I feel yeah. like, yeah. like they're no cheap houses. There. And a gas I mask. I don't <laughs> think so. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean... It's a great place to live mm. and to um, grow up and to have sex with <laughs> people's husbands and wives. <laughs> but I think I'm I think I'm in a West for life now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Get I think that. I'm over the bridge and can't go back. At least until until you need to get to that old folks home. And then yes, like, there are some <laughs> very good aged care facilities around there. <laughs> nice um, coffee, second to none. All right, that's Perfect. pretty definitive Laura. answer. Okay. How wonderful to have you Thanks on. Thanks so much, uh, Do you have anything you want to plug? Yes, Shows. I do. Um, if you are bad at football, mm. please <laughs> come All and play. good. Yeah, Laura's our biggest recruiter. Yeah. Um, the Coleman Corps, we call them. <laughs> no, we do need more people who are worse than me to come and play on our five-a-side, so <laughs> just to make me look good. <laughs> Hastings, if you listen, <laughs> come and play a few games. Any of the old people, that old folks home. Yeah, that come down. anyone that's not particularly good but very keen, like, Please come along. Laura, yeah. you're underselling yourself. You're yeah, an Laura's integral great. cog of the football machine. Absolutely. That's Thank you. Retraining as a goalkeeping ace as well. Oh, yeah. We have talked about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <but yeah. laughs> what, uh, anything else, Laura? You got, you got any shows? Any Follow, follow Laura on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, just follow me on Instagram. I'm doing a show at um, Sydney Fringe later in the year. but What's it called? It's called Jeans and a Nice Top. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Name. yeah. Thanks. Awesome. All right. And, yeah, follow and Laura. Go see Laura. What yep, about us? If James? you want to join our five side team, you can hit us up on our Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've recruited from there before. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the King J. Awesome. Um, but Definitely. if you like the show, give it a review on Apple Podcasts and, and Spotify. Spotify. Five stars, please. Subscribe to our YouTube channel because we put the full video of episodes out on Tuesday every week. You can hit us up on all socials with Tales. We love hearing from you. We heard from a few people this week, they're all legends. We love them. And thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with another banger. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Bye. Bye. Really Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Peace.